Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go over a translation versus a dilation. Okay. So um, we have, and you guys, translations for lines, those are nice. They usually don't have a dilation. Their dilation is more steepness. So we're going to focus on the absolute value and the quadratic functions. Okay. So we have these parent functions. You can write this somewhere if you want to do it on the back of your notes. Um, so we have two parent functions, okay? And from there, we're either going to translate them up, down, left, right. We're either going to stretch, compress, vertically, or horizontally. Okay, so let's talk about translations. Translations are left, right, up, or down, okay? Because the number three is inside the absolute value and inside the parentheses, this is what we would be, this is a translation. And because it's addition, when it's inside, it means the opposite. So it's a translation to the left, how many units? Three because it's inside, so that means translation to the left. Ha. It's not supposed to be an absolute value. Now, see, again, it's inside, right? See how the three is inside the absolute value and it's inside the parentheses? So it's still a translation. So we're translating the parent functions. We're translating these parent functions. This one is going to go to the right three units. So do you guys see inside? So that inside made it, um, it makes it left or right, okay? And, and then that, does that help that you can see what the difference is between an addition problem and a subtraction problem? Okay, so we're going to deal with the same two functions. You guys, a line, a line it doesn't matter if you add or subtract. It's going to move it, um, it moves it to the, it moves it up or down when you add or subtract, okay? It's the same thing with the line. It's just a little bit, it, it doesn't go, um, it doesn't really go right or left. You just move it up or down. Okay, so now we're going to deal with the same thing. We're dealing with still, so this is, this is all translation. Now watch the difference. Now, the difference is the number's not inside of the absolute value, and we have no parentheses in the quadratic. So this is an absolute value. Now that three is not inside. So this is a translation. It's still a translation. But this time is a translation what? Because it's positive, it's a translation up three units, yes, for both of them. It doesn't matter if it's a quadratic, you guys, or an absolute value, it's still a translation up. And then this one is, what do you think? Mm-hmm.
So inside, outside. And when it's inside, it always becomes that opposite, okay? Did that help a little bit? Okay. Okay, so now what we're going to do, what did that say? Did it just say it was, okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about stretched and compressed. Again, we're looking at these two parent functions. So, you guys, stretched means it's going to be elongated. So it's going to be it's going to be stretched like this. Okay, that means vertically. Compressed means it's being pushed out. So there's there's two things that you have to decide when you're looking at this. When you're looking at stretched. Um, or compressed. You have to decide if it's stretched or compressed, and you have to decide if it's vertically or horizontally. So there's two types. Again, we'll just stick with the three. I, uh, oh, there's a lot for this one. Okay. So, this has to deal with being inside, okay? So this is inside either the absolute value or the parentheses. Notice that this number, you guys, even if that number is negative, I want you to think that when you do this test, it's always positive in your mind, okay? Only when you do this test. So see how this number is greater than one? So the reason I say that is if that was a negative three and your head will be like, oh, that's not greater than one. But if you take the absolute value of any negative number, it becomes positive. So see how this number is greater than one? Then this means, um, and it's inside, so these are all going to be horizontal and these both are going to be compressed horizontally. So if it's inside, if your number is inside a parenthesis or an absolute value, it's always going to be horizontal, always, if it's inside. If it's outside, we'll talk about that. Now, so if the number's inside, it's always horizontally. Now you have to decide if it's going to be stretched or compressed. It's going to be compressed if the number is greater than zero. If the number is between zero and one, basically if it's a fraction or a decimal, now it's going to be stretched horizontally. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stick with the three, okay? So now I have y equals three absolute value of x times the absolute value of x. I have y equals three x squared. I would have y equals one third of the absolute value of x. And I would have y equals one third x squared. There's either parentheses or there's no parentheses. There's either absolute value or no absolute value. Now, the number is outside. It's outside of the absolute value. There's no parentheses. So this is vertically, no matter what. This is vertically. Now it's the opposite. When the number is greater than, greater than one, this is stretched vertically. This is compressed vertically.
if it's a linear function, you guys, it's for a dilation, it's gonna be the steepness of the line. How steep is it if that number, if there's a number in front of it, okay? So it's really, a line is not gonna be compressed or stretched. A line is, is going to be either getting more flat or more steep. And what I mean by flat is that it's gonna, you're, you're getting near that horizontal line, okay? You're getting near a constant, a constant line. Whereas uh, absolute value in a quadratic, that's when you're talking about that steepness or that, um, not that steepness, the stretchness or the compressedness. A uh, line, you're gonna talk about steepness, okay? And then reflections. Your reflection is either going to be, um, again, it's gonna be where that negative is. Can I take this off? So, you have your parent function, of course, and then you have two you have two types of reflections. You have this one, and then you have this one. So this is your parent function. Parent function. And then you have this one, and then you have this one. These are outside. See how they're outside? So this is reflex. over the x-axis. See how they're on the inside? This means it reflects over the y-axis. You guys, again, a line, if you're talking about the linear function, it's just whether it it, whether it um, goes from left to right or right to left. But these parent functions, when you're really talking about these transformations, you're really talking about the absolute value in the quadratic. Okay, so now we have our study guide and intervention form, and we're gonna look at number th three. Um, I showed you number um, one and two. You guys, this, I wanna make sure, this is a linear. I always want you, I want you to get in the habit of when you look at a function or when you look at a problem, you know, hey, this is an absolute value function, this should be a V, or this is a linear function, so this should be a line. So this is absolute value. Okay, so number three, what type of function is number three? Before we even go to graph it, what, what should it look like? What type of function is it? What is it? It's a quadratic. And what is, what is the shape gonna look like? It's gonna look like a U, okay. So now, so we know that it's gonna be a U. So we gotta look at this. So there's no number in front of the X. There's a number after it and it's being subtracted. So, and this is a translation. It's not always gonna say, hey, what's the translation? But it does. So, I use three. So it looks like this one right here, right? y squared minus three, and we said that's down three units. That's right, so we're gonna write translated down three units. That means, you guys, we're gonna take that vertex 
all the vertexes started at zero, zero, even a line. A line goes through zero, zero. When we start talking about that translation, we're talking about moving the vertex. Okay, so we're talking about moving that vertex up or down. So the parent function, the vertex is at zero, zero. This function, the vertex is going to be at zero, negative three. So one, two, three. Now, all we need is two points just to get the general shape of the parabola or the quadratic function. So you guys, I literally just picked two points. I picked negative three and three. They're not technically on the graph, but, it, but it's something that we can at least see. What is negative three squared? Nine, nine minus three is six. Three squared is nine. Nine minus three is six. We're going to graph those. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Like I said, it's not on the graph, but we have that general idea of where we're going. Because we're just, and that's all you need. Okay, now let's talk, let's do a dilation, let's do, um, let's do number five. So number five, is it a constant, a linear, or identity? Is it an absolute value or a quadratic? What is this one? What type of function? It is an absolute value. And they already told us it's a dilation. So is the number, so since it's a dilation, they told us. So here's our question. Is the number inside the absolute value or outside? It's outside. So that means it's going to be vertically. And now we have to decide, is the number a whole number or a fraction? A fraction. So that means, because it's a fraction, it's compressed. That, that's why how I got the word compressed, because the number is a fraction. And how I got vertically is because the number's on the outside. And then you guys... I literally, and the vertex doesn't move. The vertex starts at zero, zero. And you guys, I'm just picking two points just so I can get an idea of my shape, okay? It should be wider than my parent function because it's been compressed. So I think I, and I picked an even number. So I went out negative four and four. The graph goes five to five, but you can't take half of five. So we know the absolute value of negative four would be four. Half of four would be? The absolute value of four is four. Half of four is two. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. 